When California's Fair Employment Agency sued Activision Blizzard, one of the largest video game studios in the world, over allegations of sexual discrimination and harassment, I was not surprised at all. Activision Blizzard is a multi-billion dollar publisher with 9,500 employees and a roster of legendary franchises, including Call of Duty, Overwatch, Diablo, and World of Warcraft. On July 20th, California's Department of Fair Employment and Housing filed a lawsuit against Activision Blizzard, alleging executives had fostered an environment of misogyny and frat boy rule for years, violating equal pay laws and labor codes along the way. This isn't just about dirty jokes in the break room. The lawsuit highlights clear disparities in hiring, compensation, and professional growth between men and women at Activision Blizzard, and it paints a picture of pervasive sexism and outright abuse in the workplace. Here's a rundown of some of the allegations. Just 20% of all Activision Blizzard employees are women. Top leadership roles are filled solely by white men. Across the company, women are paid less, promoted slower, and fired faster than men. HR and executives fail to take complaints of harassment seriously. Women of color in particular are micromanaged and overlooked for promotions. A pervasive frat boy culture encourages behavior like cube crawls, where male employees grope and sexually harass female coworkers at their desks. It's been a few weeks since the lawsuit was filed, and employees, executives, and players have all had a chance to respond. Meanwhile, additional reports of long-standing harassment and sexism at Activision Blizzard have continued to roll out, including photos and stories of the Cosby Suite. According to the lawsuit, this was a hotel room where male employees would gather to harass women at company events, named after the rapist Bill Cosby. Days after the filing, Kotaku published photos of the supposed Cosby Suite, showing male Activision Blizzard developers posing on a bed with a framed photo of Bill Cosby at BlizzCon 2013. Screenshots of conversations among the developers discussed gathering hot chicks for the cause and other insulting, immature things. One of the only executives actually named in the suit was Blizzard head J. Allen Brock, and it alleges he routinely ignored systemic harassment and failed to punish abusers. Brock called the allegations extremely troubling, but this line was quickly thrown back in his face on Twitter when independent developer Nels Anderson compared it to a video out of BlizzCon 2010 featuring Brock on the far left. I was wondering if we could have some that don't look like they've stepped out of the Victoria's Secrets catalog. <laughs> What do you mean? Wait, wait, wait. Which catalog would you like them to step out of? Yeah. We feel you, and uh, we want to vary our female characters, absolutely. Um, so, yeah, we'll, we'll pick different catalogs. <laughs> hey, uh, Alex, what, uh, what catalog is that uh, torn female coming out of? <laughs> Not, not one you'd read. Yeah. <laughs> sexy, sexy cow business. Yeah. Thank you. On August 3rd, just two weeks after California filed its lawsuit, Brock stepped down from his role as president of Blizzard. In his place will be GM Mike Yabara and executive development VP Jen O'Neill. O'Neill will be the first woman in a president role since Activision's founding in 1979. The lawsuit notes that there has never been a non-white CEO or president of Activision Blizzard. Activision Blizzard's response to the lawsuit was tragic, with one leader calling the allegations meritless and distorted. Activision Blizzard CEO Bobby Kotick, who regularly gets into fights with shareholders over the ridiculous fortune he's amassed, published his own response to the lawsuit, where he essentially promised to listen better. Unsurprisingly, this didn't alleviate many employees' concerns. A petition in support of the lawsuit ended up gathering more than 2,000 employee signatures, and workers organized a walkout just eight days after the filing, calling for systemic change at the studio. Meanwhile, other major game developers have rallied behind the lawsuit, and former Activision Blizzard leaders have shared their support for employees, apologizing for their parts in sustaining a toxic company culture. None of this is new. As evidenced by the photos, videos, stats, and personal stories flowing out of Activision Blizzard, the company has operated on bro culture for decades. And honestly, it's been sustained by an industry that functions in largely the same way.
One plaintiff said to her super said her supervisor told her, quote, diversity should not be a focal point of the design of Riot Games products because gaming culture is the last remaining safe haven for white teen boys. I was also hearing stories about other women being on a list of like sexy employees that higher ups at the company wanted to sleep with. A lot of men told me about the COO like going behind them and humping them at meetings where women weren't present. In 2019, a wave of accusations against prominent male developers crashed over the industry, and AAA studios like Ubisoft and Riot Games made headlines for fostering toxic workplace environments. California is currently suing Riot over allegations of sexual harassment and gender discrimination in hiring and pay practices. But even that's not new. Women, non-binary folks, and marginalized people in the video game industry have been speaking up about systemic harassment and discrimination for literal decades. Sexism is apparent in the hiring and pay practices of many major studios, and it's also clear in the games themselves, which feature an overabundance of straight, white, male protagonists. What is surprising this time around is that the lawsuit against Activision Blizzard kinda came out of nowhere. It took a blockbuster media report to make California sue Riot in 2020, but the lawsuit against Activision Blizzard appeared on its own after years of quiet investigation by the Department of Fair Employment and Housing. If sexism is systemic in the video game industry, it feels like the system might finally be fighting back. For all the latest video game news, stay tuned to Engadget.com and subscribe to the Engadget YouTube channel.